channels. Uh, the length is 2646. I'm in the lobby of the Marriott Hotel in San Francisco waiting to meet someone and they're late and I've got work to do and I can't find AC or a phone line, but no problem. I am totally computer functional thanks to this Simon PDA from Bell South and IBM. It's a really interesting PDA built around this cellular phone. So with it, I can get a page, I can check my email, I can send or receive faxes, I can make a phone call, of course, and I can use it like a normal PDA. I can check my calendar, I can look up a phone number, even scratch a note to myself on this touch-sensitive screen, and it has a PCMCIA expansion slot here so I can add memory or peripherals. This is just one example of the really cool new mobile computing gadgets that are out there now. Today, we'll show you the newest and the neatest portable computing devices on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Hewlett Packard, working with industry leaders to ensure compatibility across the board and across the network. HP PCs, you're looking at partnership in a whole new light. Additional funding provided by the SPA, presenters of the annual Excellence in Software Awards. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and with me today is George Morrow, the founder and chairman of Morrow Design, and the guy who designed one of the most successful early portable computers, the Morrow Pivot 2, which we have right over here. Open it up, George. Let's take okay, a look at this Stuart. guy. Still working after all still these years, Still working from huh? 1985. And locked in time. It still says 1985 there, May the 2nd, I guess when it was f first came out. Let me ask you, George, when you were designing the Pivot 2 back in 85, what were the technology barriers? What were the issues you were dealing with uh, in trying to get portables to work properly? Well, mostly it had to do with power, Stuart. Uh, the chips of the day were pretty high powered compared to today's CMOS. And CMOS was just coming out of the market. Fortunately for us, we were able to design, make a clever enough design and, and use enough of the available chips where we could get something that would run on batteries, be fully compatible, and be a, a marginally decent portable computer. And the issues today with laptops are, are basically the same, I guess, huh? Yes, it's still, we, you know, we realized that the screens were hard to read, that the batteries didn't last long enough, and they weighed too much, and, and that's what it is today. Yeah. What we didn't see, though, was a quest for power and a quest for color and, and and the, the pretty much the uh, fallout of, of Windows and the power software. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of notebook computer do you use? I'll put you Stuart, on the Stuart, I'm, I'm, I'm still waiting for the perfect machine. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to wait for a long yeah, time. Yeah, maybe I'll design it. <laughs> okay. Today, we will look at five brand new notebook computers that pack lots of power in a portable package. We'll also look at mobile computing peripherals, and you'll see the latest generation PDAs. Now, one concern you may have in shopping for a notebook computer is its durability on the road. Well, we found one notebook user who routinely puts his computer through a torture test. He's a race car driver, and he takes his laptop to work. At the Phoenix International Raceway, professional drivers roar around the track at speeds well over 100 miles per hour. They rely as much on their own keen senses as on their cars as they thread their speeding vehicles around the curving track. While automobile racing is an old sport, the arrival of portable computers has added a new element to the gears and grease of the competition. Driver Bill Dollahite uses a Dell Latitude notebook computer to measure lap times and to analyze the performance of Dell's own car. We're analyzing data down to 200 samples per second off of the car, which is much more than a driver can feel or the crew can tell from any other manual type of data. To pull signals off of the car, we can go up to 32 channels of data acquisition on the car off of each suspension point on all four corners, uh, the engine RPM, lateral and longitudinal Gs, steering input, throttle input, all the way down the line. You, you can get as sophisticated as you want to with the sensors. Sensors mounted around the vehicle collect and deliver data to a central storage device at the front of the car. When the car returns to the pit, the data can be downloaded to a computer through the serial port. Inside the crew's trailer, alongside tires and tools, is a desktop computer where Bill and his crew can view and discuss the results on color-coded graphs. 
The post-race sessions seem relaxed and peaceful compared to the ear-splitting environment at the trackside pit, where there are few creature comforts either for people or computers. All of the functions we're doing here are in a mobile and hostile environment, which highlights the two strongest features of the Dell Latitude. One, in the durability, which we've uh, hands down won the, the rugged ability, durability, drop test, spill the coffee in it. It's very, very rugged as, as a field system. Uh, the other thing is we have record-setting battery life in this, and there's no power out on a pit wall, so we can run a full, a full day of testing without ever plugging the Dell Attitude in. Bill's notebook computer is much more than an entry-level machine. The demanding data acquisition program runs under Windows 95, and the large color screen is Active Matrix. But what matters most to the driver is the successful merging of computer science and racing talent. They actually enhance each other because it lets the driver optimize his performance by not having to fight the machine. And then you can really see what a driver is able to do. And by having a driver that's very smooth and very consistent, it can take the scientific data and you have reliable information to build off of. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. Now we're going to look at three new notebook computers and we'll start with the Apple PowerBook 540C and this is Charlie Tritzler of Apple who's going to show it to us. Uh, this is top of the line PowerBook from Apple and what it, what, give us some of the basic features on it, Charlie. I'm taking a look at the whole machine. It's got some revolutionary technology built in. I thought today what we could do is really focus on one piece of that, uh, which is the trackpad. Uh, which is then a unique pointing device that we introduced back in May of last year. Okay, so right, you've got the trackpad here, no little ball, no little pointers, it's just flat. Now, now tell us what the technology is under here. Um, it's called capacitance coupling, and you've seen the concept before when you walk up to an elevator and go to push the button and mm -hmm. the light just comes on. It's the same idea. As my finger comes close to the pad, it automatically senses my finger approaching. So I can just go in here and touch it, and I'm just pointing with my finger, which theoretically is the most natural thing to do. Huh? Exactly, because it's a very natural interface. The yeah. same square rectangle you see there is what you see on the screen. Okay, but what's wrong with a trackball? Why is this better than a trackball? Well, Apple actually pioneered the use of the trackball back in the original PowerBooks back in 1991. And if you take a look at a trackball, um, it's a very intuitive interface, but because there's some mechanical parts inside of it, the rolling, the balls on the inside, just the grease from your finger and the After dust. After a while, it starts slipping. Exactly. Yeah. It starts to plug it up. And it's big. It is large. So if you take a look at the size, it's pretty big. And, and we know that computer users always want the yeah. smallest notebook possible. So we created the technology called the trackpad. And here you can see it. And if we take a look at it on a side, you can see it's extremely thin. Mm -hmm. um, because it's thin, it takes up much less space inside right. the computer allows us to do things like move two batteries into the product to give you much longer battery mm -hmm. life. It weighs less, it costs less, and there's no moving parts. Since there's no moving parts, that reliability problem goes away. The other nice feature I want you to show me is you can, in fact, do wireless messaging here with your PCMCIA slot, can't you? Exactly. Uh, with PCMCIA, we've created the Apple Mobile Message System, uh, which allows you to take a pager card from Socket Corporation, uh, this is really the centerpiece of the technology, the hardware. So that's a pager on its own. I could be carrying that inside my jacket pocket. Exactly. Right now. You see the screen up top. And, and it the says I have, in fact, a new message. And then I could stick it inside my power book? Why don't you do that? Okay, so I get my message. I stick it inside the slot here, like that. Okay, there here we go. go. And shove it all the way in. When you drop it in, the way the computer integrates it, it takes a look at the card. So the computer is always checking to see what's on the card and what's available. Once it sees the card, it takes the information off the card and then pulls it into the computer to display mm -hmm. it to you. And it's not just paging. For instance, if I'd sent you an appointment, uh, maybe to meet somebody at a certain time at a certain place, it can see that it's an appointment, bring that data in, and then display it up on the screen, um, automatically launching your calendar, automatically creating that file. Okay, so stick, right sticking the card in there does stuff on its own, and it will go into my calendar and actually put, exactly. put in the information. Exactly. All right, Charlie, thank you very much. Sure. All right, now with more and more software coming out on CD-ROMs, it's starting to be a bit of a pain not to have a CD-ROM drive in your notebook computer. Well, the newest CD-ROM laptop is the Toshiba T2150, and this is Carol Tenwaldi from Toshiba yeah. to show it to us. Okay, give us a little brief tour of this new 2150. All right. First of all, it's a DX4 75 megahertz processor. comes standard with 8 megs of RAM, and that's expandable to 32. It has a huge 500 megabyte hard drive built in. And you'll notice a spectacular 10 and a half inch diagonal active matrix screen, and there is a dual scan available. Um, for expandability, there are two PCMCIA slots, two Type 2s and Type 3. 
situation. And also, when we're looking at multimedia workstations, the sound card is very important. So you have sound built in. Absolutely. It's a 16-bit sound card, which is fully Sound Blaster Pro compatible. You'll notice we have a microphone here, a speaker, and then we have jacks on the side mm -hmm. for external. All right, now, where do you have the CD-ROM here? The CD-ROM is hidden right here on the side. I'm just going to stop this program. Mm -hmm. It's a very low line, uh, double speed, five and a quarter inch CD-ROM. It just slides in okay. like so. Now, you don't have a three and a half inch floppy built in though. Is that the trade-off? Do not. It is actually um, external to the system, but it is included okay, in the so price. So that's your little floppy, and it does come with the machine. Absolutely. It's included just external. in the price. All right. Now, another thing I, I want you to mention on this is the power. Absolutely. This is fabulous. There is no power brick with this particular machine. The power supply so is actually built in. Plug this out and plug this out. Look, Ma, no brick. Exactly. And it really works. It really, it's working. Okay. Show me the CD-ROM drive and let's see if that All right. Let's go ahead. Works. And the other thing that uh, is interesting about this particular unit is that it's all built into a 6.9 pound package. Mm -hmm. So you get all of this for under 7 pounds. And the other thing that's interesting is this machine is priced very affordably. So it comes in at list $2,000 less than its nearest competition. Okay, which is, which is what? What's a sort of street price going to be on this? Um, with the Active Matrix screen, yeah. uh, probably $4,800, $4,900. Okay, okay. All right, thank you. That's the new Toshiba 2150 with built-in CD. Thanks a lot. All right, one of the compromises you usually have to make with a sub-notebook computer is a smaller keyboard. Not anymore, says IBM. Here to show us their new Butterfly sub-notebook is Ron Broomfield of IBM. How you doing, Ron? Hello, Stuart. Okay, this is your new baby? This is the new ThinkPad 701C. Nice it's and actually small, only, nice and light. Only four and a half pounds, and the dimensions are actually smaller than a sheet of typing paper. Yeah. All right, show me some of the, the tricks here. Well, basically, some of the problems that sub-notebooks have had in the past is that they've had either too small a screen, too small a keyboard, and limited functionality. We've included a 10 and a half inch Active Matrix color display as well as the new TrackRite keyboard. Ooh. Okay, I want to see an instant replay. Do that again now. Close it up and open it up. So the keyboard ends up bigger than the computer. That's right. Pretty clever. So what you did is chop up that keyboard in two, sort of fix it around like a jigsaw puzzle, and then open it up automatically every time you lift the lid. That's right. And we've also included our Track Point 3 um, pointing device integrated into the keyboard. Some of the other features on the system are a built-in telephone plug that uh, gives mm -hmm. you um, telephony functionality, 16-bit audio with um, Sound Blaster and Sound Blaster Pro support, as well as 18 voice MIDI voice synthesis built mm -hmm. in. The system also has an infrared, infrared transceiver in the back, and they use this for communicating with other uh, ThinkPad mm -hmm. products as well as organizers and printing wirelessly, wireless. In addition, there are two Type 2 PCMCIA ports in the side or one Type mm -hmm. 3. And the battery is very easy to remove and change. Yeah. And your hard drive comes out too, actually. Yeah, let's good. show that. The hard drive is very small yeah, as well. That's cool. All right, can we take a look at the one you have set up and plugged in and working over here? Now, the DSP is integrated into the system, so it gives you full duplex speakerphone support. And we'll go ahead and we'll dial this number and we'll test it out. So we've got a two-way telephone built in here. That's right. Hello, Bev, is that you? This is Stuart. We're on TV. Hi. All right, this thing really works. I'm calling you on an IBM ThinkPad, believe it or not. Okay. All right, thanks a lot. Great. Well, we'll hang this up Yeah. and close the, the duplex speakerphone. And you'll see that there's also a full digital answering machine built in with the system hmm. as well. And you can program this so you can develop this so that it, it um, gives you fax spec support as well. Well, wow. so you've got really little little portable office sitting here. In this you really tiny do. Little package. In addition, the system comes with an Intel 486 DX4 75 megahertz processor, and the hard drive sizes are 360, 540, and an optional 720 megabyte hard drive. And it's the new, you're actually calling it the 701C. The 701C. Okay, pretty cool. Thank you. All right, another new notebook computer getting lots of attention is the new Color Omnibook from Hewlett Packard, and it's showing up in all kinds of odd places, including the yachts in the America's Cup race. Seen from a distance, the gliding yachts competing in the America's Cup race look serene and effortless as they weave through the ocean swells and around each other. But on board the sailboats, the competition is as tense as the sail is taut against the wind. This year, one of the defending boats is the America Cubed, piloted by the women's team. Among the tools used on board the yacht and the support boat are a number of computers, including the Hewlett Packard Omnibook and an even smaller palm top. With them, the boat's designers and trainers can download telemetry data directly from desktop machines in the wheelhouse. 
On each sailboat, as anybody that does a lot of sailing knows, there are instruments on the boat that tell the navigator and the skipper what's going on. For instance, the wind speed, the boat speed, the heel angle, the wind angle on the boat, um, the tension on the mast, all of that. There's a lot of information, the global positioning system. All of that information comes from sensors around the boat into the computer and it's all then sent up here to me. As with earthbound racers, the yachts have sensors to detect the movements and performance of the vessel. Just as important is tracking the ship against the wind, measured by tenders which run alongside. Shipboard computers collect and plot each boat's position relative to the wind and how close to the optimum position each boat is sailing. The easy availability of hardware and data has given a new mobility to the crew and staff. We have a really unique thing that we've started to do is um, to be able to get some of our data from the sailboats actually put onto these palm tops through a cell phone and that's been a real tremendous thing so we can be even that much more mobile right out in the water with data and that's been pretty exciting to see but the coaches use these for the same reason we sit behind like tomorrow I'll be riding right behind the race boats and we just sit and punch our notes into here and you get back at the end of the day and you become very proficient as I say the two thumb type on the palm tops. The data from testing America cubed models was used to perfect the final design, developed on a PC and using a program called VPP or Velocity Prediction Program. The output from all of our tests goes through the VPP and gives us actual boat speeds and time around the course for a new keel idea, a new boat a hull idea, a new sail shape, etc. All of these are compared in times around the course or actual boat speeds. Watching the sailing team guide America cubed through the water may bring to mind the graceful schooners of the last century. And in fact, winning the race depends as much on centuries old sailing skills as on modern science. What the science of sailing gives us now and the technology, what it gives us is almost confirmation of what should be a sixth sense for any good sailor. And we can take those margins right down to something very small, like an eighth of a knot. You know, the boat is going eighth of a knot faster today than it did yesterday because we've made this change to the rudder, for instance. So before it was a gut feeling, you know, oh, we think it's going better, it feels a bit better, but now we can say, yes, it is better. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. So you've decided on a notebook computer, but just like with a boat, your buying has only begun. What about peripherals? There are some basics you really ought to be thinking about. Here to show us a few is Michael Goldstein, Editor-in-Chief of PC Laptop Magazine. Hi, Michael. Hey, Stuart. All right. Uh, your view is that the use of laptop computers has really changed over the years. Well, laptops are really growing in use, and everyone is using them. They're what I call whatever machines. They're not just desktop companions anymore. They're desktop replacements. Right. And we have all these PC MCIA slots that everybody showed us up until now, and you've got to buy stuff to put in there to get some value out of that. You've got a couple examples here. Show them to us. Well, if you're going to replace your desktop, one of the first things you're going to need is a modem to get on the Internet, mm -hmm. telecommunicate, and so on. This is um, a standard 14.4 BPS data fax modem. This is what's called the dongle. This is how you attach. So that's the, where your RJ11 phone cord would go in. Right, exactly. This is where you would attach your to your phone cord. Mm -hmm. um, Megahertz Corporation has a different idea. They're saying, why carry that big dongle when you can snap off the X-Jack? This is your modem. built into it. But I think that's probably a little more expensive, huh? It ranges between $200 and mm -hmm. $400, depending on its modem speed and so on and so yeah. forth. OK, so there's two modems. Now, what's the Zircom card there? Zircom has an interesting solution for many of us have to plug into our networks as well as modems. Why not? one card to do two things. Hmm. This is an Ethernet credit card fax modem. It's quite a mouthful, but what it does, you can hook up to your LAN, or you can dial out to uh, data, f you know, send a fax, receive a fax, um, online service. So network card and fax modem all built into one, huh? All in one. And this guy here? This is a multimedia interface card, but what's interesting is not the card, but the box it comes with. This machine gives multimedia to the average laptop mm -hmm. user. 
So we've got a CD-ROM drive, sound card, speakers, the whole ball game, and it can go into your laptop. Right. Everyone wants to do multimedia these days. There's 10,000 multimedia titles. This is the Zenith Data Systems V player. Includes a 16-bit sound card, speakers, mm. sound in, sound out, microphones, headphones. Um, and you don't always have to take it with you. Yeah, you can stay cool. at home or you can bring it with you. All right, this final little guy over here. Okay. That's what, a printer, huh? What office would, uh, no, this is my battery. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> what office is a complete without a printer? And this is a Pentax pocket jet, $499. Prints on thermal paper, which is special thermal paper you'll mm -hmm. need. But offers excellent quality printing and weighs yeah, a we, pound. We just printed something out, which is... Uh, this is the example of the kind of copy that comes out of that thing. It weighs a pound, you say, huh? Yes, just 18 ounces. And uh, Where does it get its power from? Uh, this one, it has a battery inside or you mm -hmm. can attach an AC. Wow. And that's it. So it's easy enough to carry that thing around. As you say, it's smaller than a lot of laptop batteries, huh? Between this notebook computer and this printer, we're talking six-pound office. So portable computing has changed a lot. Thanks a lot, Mike. Okay, if size and weight are really important to you in a portable computing device, then maybe you want a PDA, a personal digital assistant. There are lots of choices here, too. And Rich Malloy, editor-in-chief of Mobile Office magazine, is going to show us some. And you've got four neat toys here. Should we start with the newest version of the Newton, Rich? Yeah, these are really incredible toys. We really like them. Now, this is the Newton. This is probably the most famous PDA out there. It's been out there about two years, and uh, it's got some strange mixed reviews probably mostly because of the handwriting recognition yeah. and a problem. But it, it's not really a problem. You, you really can't expect a system like this to understand your handwriting. I can't understand <laughs> the handwriting all the time, so it's not really uh, a real issue. But other than the handwriting recognition, you like it? Yeah, well, it's got, this one is better. It has more memory inside. It's got a, a screen that you can remove here. It's moved back here. And uh, the screen is actually a little better to read. The handwriting recognition is a little better. Mm -hmm. They're always moving a little bit forward. But the real key to this product here is software. There are more programs available for this PDA than for any of the other ones. So uh, especially for database applications. Mm -hmm. If you're out in the field using a clipboard and you're writing things down and you're typing them into your portable later on, you might as well just get a Newton, yeah. get some database software, just key it in here once, do the link automatically to your portable, mm -hmm. and then you've got it there. And you this is a third generation one, right? This is with a 120 now. This is the MessagePad 120, the third attempt that Apple's come out with this product. There are also other products based on the Newton technology, mm -hmm. for example, right. from Motorola. And, uh, and so we'll see probably even others. And if you want to just play, the original one is still for sale real cheap, right? Oh, real cheap. It's <laughs> like $199. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great. Okay, let's move to Zorus from Sharp. Okay, this is uh, from the guys who do the Wizard. And the Wizard has been very, very popular. And they're trying to build on that with this new system, which just came out. Now, as you notice here, it has a great keyboard. This is the best keyboard I've seen on a PDA. I mean, it's really good. You can almost touch type, mm -hmm. but um, for fingers like mine, it's difficult. But uh, it, it's very good. The, it's still a little early yet. Uh, we don't have a lot of software for it, but uh, we may see that come in the future. One of the neat things is this little fax modem here. This mm -hmm. is very, very small. You just hook a telephone wire in there, and you can fax. Now, also, there's a PCM CA8 slot in here. And if you want to fax on the road somewhere where there's no phone, you just put a wireless modem card So you in can there. do wireless communication with yeah. the Zorus. And it's, it's a very useful product. We'll see this grow. Okay, let's go to Magic Link next from Sony. Now, this product came out a couple of months ago. It's a very impressive product. The best thing about it is the user interface. Now, if you look on the screen here, here's a, a little message pad here. You can write on it and uh, go back to the desk. And it just it looks like, well, my desk is a lot <laughs> messier than this one. But you can see so You just touch here. whatever you want to do, your Rolodex, yeah. your phone. If you're tired of this area, you go out into the hallway, go down and walk down the hallway to different areas, or go back into the desk. And it is very easy for people to come up to speed on this system. It has also very good telecommunication support in that it's very easy for people to just plug in the telephone wire into a jack here, and it automatically goes out and sees if you have any mail. Yeah, so it has a built-in modem and a built-in telephone, in fact, right? You can just talk and use this as a speaker Right, as a speaker there's a little, uh, a little attachment you can get where you can, uh, a little microphone and a little uh, earphone that you can just put on and use this as a phone, right? Uh -huh. Okay, and finally, the Scion. Well, this is uh, my personal favorite. Notice how small it is. It's very light. You open it up. It's got a nice little, uh, little keyboard and a fairly little screen but it's, it's got a nice assortment of software programs. If you can see, each of these buttons here 
calls up different programs. So this is really more like a little computer than any of the other things you've seen. Exactly. Seen. This is more like a little palm top computer. Right, I mean, right. it's, it's got a lot of power. It has a, one of the things I really like about it is this little speaker in the back. This is a very big speaker for a system so small. And one of the things you can do with that speaker is you can dial people's phone numbers automatically. Mm. Just press enter. So auto dial, just put it up to, the, up to the phone. Just hold your phone up to this speaker and you can dial very, very easily. Now there's also a little alarm feature in here. You can record your voice and you can change the alarm to whatever you want. So I change the alarm to this. Hey Rich, play with me. All right. Yeah. Okay, so four neat little PDAs. Real quick, what's the price range of these things here? The price range is, well, this one it just came out is about $600, $700. The Sharp, it's about $500. The Sony is about seven or $800. And this one's about $300, $400, depending on the memory. They're great. Thanks a lot, Rich. Sure. Okay, that's our look at portable computing. Remember, if you have questions about any of the things you've seen on today's program, drop by our forum on CompuServe. It's called the Computers.